So we're going to start by looking in the directory and see where we're at. Okay, so we have a couple of files here. So what I'm going to do is so the analysis runs relatively quick and doesn't take a long time. I will just run it on the genome of uh, an isolate, not isolate, Clostridialis captivus, uh, which is an opportunistic human pathogen. I have here both a gene link file and FASTA file. And I also have Mike Lee's uh, bioinf tools, which he uh, has provided in his GitHub repository. And we're going to use this, uh, one of his tools, briefly, uh, just to show you that you can convert the output of Jimbing file from anti-smash into an amino acid file, which you can then use for downstream analyses, which is really cool. Uh, for some reason, I couldn't get uh, Jupyter Notebook to, uh, to put this in the path automatically, as it does via the, uh, with the dot bash rc script. Bash rc. Hmm. Put it in there in my GitHub repository. I don't know why it's not loading it with the updated version. But uh, to fix that, we're going to run uh, the first command in the walkthrough that's available on this uh, anti smash lesson. And we're going to paste this and then put bioinf tools into the path. So the script that we will want to run later on is a bit genbank to AA6 and bit genbank to FASTA. Right, so if you go back a directory, you'll see that these tools are in fact in the uh, in the path. So. There you go. Okay, it's a very simple script to use. Uh, but we're going to start by downloading the anti-smash databases, which are uh, required for the additional analyses that anti-smash does. So we're going to click that. That shouldn't take very long. It's actually a very quick run. And then after this is done, we're just going to print the anti smash help menu. And that looks like this. All right, so it's pretty easy. Uh, there's a dash dash help show all uh, option, which will allow you to show the full list of arguments. And we're going to run that later on. But first, uh, I wanted to run it on just run the simplest version of the command as possible just to see what we get. Ah, it's running now. So for the output options you have, you can name the directory that you want to output the results. You can name the HTML file that you get. Uh, you can add an HTML description. Uh, we're going to go over gene finding tool in a second. Uh, you can also provide a GFF3 file uh, for, if you're providing a genome in a faster format. If you're providing just an assembly, uh, you can either tell it to run Prodigal or you can provide a GFF3 file. Uh, we're going to run it with these additional analyses uh, in a second. Uh, but that's actually going to be the last thing we run, and I'm going to end the tutorial after that because this actually takes about an hour to run. Uh, with these analyses. <clears throat> you can also specify taxon. So if you're providing something that's not a bacteria, if you're providing this a fungal sequence, uh, you'd want to specify dash dash taxon on G. Okay. So it finished, and we're going to see that it has written a file called that's named after the R input file, but it's a folder. 
So let us go into the folder and examine the output. So you get uh, regions, and each region is a putative uh, biosynthetic gene cluster. You also have the index.html. So if you click on this index.html file, uh, not that. That will take us to a page. So it's actually doesn't show up well here in this notebook version, but if you uh, if you download it, then you click on it. No. Is it? Yeah. Well, anyway, you can examine the, the output this way. I thought there was a way to get it to look like uh, contact view. Let's see. I guess it's having trouble now loading these regions. Theoretically, it should present you with, a, uh, with something that looks like looks like this, which I showed in my presentation, but doesn't seem to be working right now. Okay, let's put a pin in that for now. For me, I usually go with the uh, GenBank output, and I just parse this with uh, Whatever, downstream, whatever downstream analyses that I want to use the files for. Uh, but theoretically, you should be able to get this to work. I'm just not sure why it's not working now. Okay, chalk it up to technical difficulties. Okay, well, we're gonna move on. The tutorial. And we're gonna pr uh, provide it with a FASTA file. So if you want to provide it with FASTA file, which is essentially just a genome assembly, you can run the command like so, where you provide the, the genome sequence uh, and you add a flag, dash dash gene, gene finding tool, and you just tell it to use prodigal. <clears throat> and it's actually going to give you the same exact results. Actually, it's going to give you a runtime error because uh, the output directory which is the default output directory already has files in it and it doesn't want to overwrite, which is actually a nice feature of this, just because I've definitely run things before where I've accidentally overwritten files. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually, instead of deleting, I'm gonna move this to <clears throat> We're going to give them the command. And it shouldn't take that much longer to run. It'll take slightly longer because it's going to run prodigal. Well, you get some nice links here at least that do work. It allows you to, uh, takes you to an anti smash documentation page which, which talk about the various. Uh, their syntax basically for bisethetic gene clusters. Can I ask a question while it's running? Oh, yeah. Um, what do you, what's your usual downstream thing where you throw your uh, gen, gen bank files? Um, well, so my first go-to is usually just to uh, uh, extract the amino acid sequences from the gen bank files and run them, blast them against uh, RefSeq just to see what the closest, uh, uh, what the closest, so if I'm doing like a metagenomic analysis, which is usually what I'd use this for, is I, I'd want to see what the closest uh, relative in, that's in RefSeq that encodes those genes, right? So if, if I haven't done binning, for example, I just have like a raw metagenome assembly and I want to look at the bisonetic gene clusters, I'll extract the amino acid sequences and blast that against um, 
UFC just to see what the annotations come back as. Um, uh, I've also, I make figures kind of, I like these types of figures. Um, but I, I do these myself. So I'll take the gin bank files and then I'll parse the length of the PBGG and then just sort of put together kind of a like operon structures like this. And um, I haven't done that much before. I haven't really used anti-smash extensively. I will, but we have a, there's one data set that, that I'll have access to soon that will need to be uh, anti-smashed, but something like that is what I, I have in mind with the GenBank files. Uh, I think you can, you should also be able to convert the GenBank files to GFF3 files. And uh, if like I'm doing transcriptomics, for example, and I want to look at the the gene expression, relative gene expression of genes from the bus that are gene cluster. I'll, uh, you know, after mapping, you can throw the GFF file into HTC and then get a count table. Does that sort of answer your question? Yeah, yeah, it's giving me a lot of ideas. Cool. Okay, I think it's done. Yeah, it's done. Oh. Uh, Yes. Okay. So we get an output like this. Uh, as you can see, same exact thing. Uh, so let's run one of the scripts that Mike Lee has provided in his repository. So we're going to go with bit genbank. Bit. And bank. To say we want to extract protein sequences from the uh, from these gene bank files, so we need to take two inputs. We're going to provide it with this file, and we're going to output past the thousand A. Okay, there you go. It's done. As you can see, it created file A. So I have our protein sequences here. You can also just extract the whole region if you're interested in that. So I think the, this, this is run almost exactly the same except that I'm going to give it a different region. Dash O, and I'm going to name this FASTA to generate it. additional file here. And then here we just have the whole cluster on its own. So one, one last thing that I want to run is help show all. So print the entirety of the help menu. And this gives you a lot more uh, modularity in how you want to run uh, anti-smash. So there's advanced options if you want to provide a minimum length for a cluster. If you want to, if you have so when you run the downloading Smash databases uh, using the Conda installed version, you should have to provide the database path. So man, we can write the so man detection strip. So this is uh, this relates to the web interface version where they have kind of thing you can toggle around. So here you just have three options for strict, relaxed, and loose. Uh, you still have your additional analyses here. So, and you can also provide, enable additional functions. Like you can enable length of peptide identification, peptide identification, and the PSPKS identification. So all this stuff uh, will 
give you a lot more output, uh, but it's gonna increase the amount of time the program runs. I'd say if you're running it on the metagenome, I haven't really tested it to see how long it takes on the metagenome with all these options enabled, but um, I'd say it's worth it. Like for the genome of Sodalis per captivus, analysis goes from being a few minutes to about an hour, which I'd say is a great trade-off if you're gonna get a lot more output. So let's run anti-smash with a bunch of options just to see that it works. Actually, we're gonna move the, uh, out the directory so we can So basically, uh, for this run, I asked it to do full hammer, uh, which uh, basically allows it to uh, run the whole genome Hummer analysis. Basically, query the PFAM <clears throat> HMM library against the identified gene clusters. ASF, which is the active site finder, uh, then it'll take the identified gene clusters and then blast them against against the known clusters that have been identified previously from RefSeq. Uh, cluster hammer, let's see what cluster hammer does. Cluster limited, hammer analysis. Actually, I don't remember what that does. Yeah, I don't remember what that does, but I will say that there's a really nice, um, if I can find it. There's a nice uh, anti-smash manual that allows, that describes all of these uh, analyses and what each one of these does. And they've sort of been um, sequentially added to anti-smash throughout the various versions that have been uh, generated throughout the years. So if you if you go through the literature, and there's five publications associated with anti-smash, you'll be able to uh, read about some of these uh, that have been added in the versions two, two through five. Okay. And it's still running. It's going to run for about an hour. So I'm going to end the lesson here.